Hello YouTube. For this fascinating subject, I'll share the opinions of the Russian scientists who graduated from the Military Space Academy, whose ideas I share once in a while. And I'll also present very interesting ideas of a capable and knowledgeable American scientist. From the earliest childhood, we were all told that we should be proud of our big human brain, and rightly so, because this organ helped us create the modern civilization, to reach into outer space, to develop an artificial intelligence that writes music no worse than Beethoven's. And the human brain is indeed the largest brain among all primates in terms of body size. On average, its size varies from 1,131 to 1,274 cubic centimeters. It has 86 billion neurons. Our brains are three times larger than those of gorillas or orangutans, whose bodies are about the same size as a human body. The self-assured folk wisdom says that the size of the human brain has provided us with the so-called success as a species. This idea also explains why Homo sapiens continues to exist. While Homo neanderthalensis Neanderthal, um, became extinct about 44,000 to 40,000 years ago, However, there is a very interesting distinction here. Not so long ago, anthropologists found that Neanderthals actually had bigger brains than we do. And recently, scientists have found out a strange thing. It turns out that about 40,000 years ago, um, an unusual metamorphosis began to occur within the human brain. And since then, the brain of Homo sapiens has decreased by about 10%. Up to 40,000 years ago, the brain size of all 21 human species continued to increase, including Australopithecus, that was about uh, 3.7 uh, million years ago, Homo habilis, about 2.4 uh, million years ago, Homo erectus, I'd say about from about 1.8 million to uh, 30,000 years ago and so on. And then this process went backwards. So what happened to the human brain? Researchers have several thoughts on this uh, topic. Among the many potential causes is collective intelligence. This is a very important factor. The social roles of a person in society have become more individual and today people need to know less. They have become less versatile and they have to do fewer different objects or actions. Compare an IT infrastructure specialist with a survivalist. Uh, the latter is able to get food, make fire and make tools, clothes and weapons. Well, the IT specialist, what can he do? He can cook dumplings. Which of them is more adapted to primitive life in terms of skills? That is why mostly such a metamorphosis occurs with the human brain. Since certain areas of the brain are associated with certain actions, the narrow specialization of the tasks being solved leads to an overall decrease in its size. And this process has been going on for millennia. A person gradually lost the need, for example, to memorize the name or function of each plant in the forest. He no longer needed to know how to find those plants, understand how it grows up, <coughs> or when the plant needs to be planted. People just wrote it down on paper and that's it. And these days you don't have to do that either. Now, to find out something, you can just say, okay, Google, look for it. In addition, the average temperature of the Earth's atmosphere has increased since the end of the last ice age, which ended about 10,000 years ago. Smaller bodies and consequently brains allow better control of heat exchange processes. 
A decrease in the size of the human brain may also be associated with less aggressive behavior of people in general. And finally, a smaller brain means a smaller skull size. Uh, with smaller skulls, it is easier to give birth. Easier. Offspring with a smaller skull has a better chance of survival and is less likely to get complications during childbirth. Uh, J. M. Steibel, a brain sur scientist at the Los Angeles Natural History Museum and author of the study Decreases in Brain Size and Encephalization in an anat Anatomically Modern Humans, published in 2021 in the journal Brain Behavior and Evolution. It says that the size of human brains has greatly decreased in the past 50,000 years. In fact, the study found that brain size has decreased by more than 5% in modern Homo sapiens. Stribel also found evidence that brain size relative to our bodies, known as encephalization, has decreased as well, mainly due to obesity. Despite that, though, the paper did note uh, that measure of general intelligence and educational attainment have all risen during much of the past century. In fact, environmental factors such as health, education, and technology might have made up for the fact that our brains were shrinking or that brain volume isn't strongly correlated with intelligence. It should be noted that Stibel used IQ as a measure of intelligence. However, it's still widely considered a standard benchmark to assess cognitive function. Disturbingly, Stibel points out that a significant decrease in IQ has been noted over the past 30 years in many parts of the globe, with the largest declines occurring across industrialized nations. That means that environmental factors might not be able to help increase or maintain our level of intelligence in the long term. Stibel questions whether natural selection can drive species level intelligence beyond an upper bound of fitness. But that is if we assume we are terrestrial in origin. Well, here's why I refer back to the bright young Russian space scientist and I wonder, I really wonder how official his views are. Well, here's what they say. Some researchers come to the conclusion that people are not from Earth at all. So one day a beautiful balloon returned from a flight that took place at a very high altitude and suddenly it turned out that it was covered with microscopic life forms which may have come from outer space. Of course, this is very controversial because it has long been known that bacteria live in a variety of conditions. However, this fact has caused fierce debate about the fact that life did not or originate on Earth at all, and that it came to this planet from outer space. Panspermia is the hypothesis that life exists throughout the universe, distributed by space dust, meteoroids, asteroids, comets, and planetoids, um, as well as sp by spacecraft carrying unintended contamination by microorganisms. In other words, we are not from Earth. Among the representatives of the scientific world, there are those who claim that life, in fact, originated on Mars. This is the conclusion they make when analyzing the composition of Martian meteorites. After all, it, in their opinion, unequivocally uh, says that the concentration of certain substances is crucial for the emergence of life. During another experiment, it became clear that amino acids on our planet could appear when Earth collided with comets. This suggests that life may be widespread throughout our solar system. There is a very interesting book on this topic. It was written by American ecologist Dr. Ellis Silver. It's titled People Are Not From Earth. 
It's it in it the whole situation is viewed from a very interesting angle. The author claims that people cannot be indigenous inhabitants of the earth in any way, and perhaps they arrived on this planet from very remote places. Um, Silver gives arguments based on, on the peculiarities of human physiology. He suggests that humans have never evolved at the same time as other forms of life on earth and that we actually came from other places in the universe. And what is possible, we got into this wonderful, comfortable world with the help of extraterrestrial beings. It happened tens of thousands of years ago. It sounds crazy, right? Or even provocative. And perhaps it contradicts your beliefs. That's okay. However, for the sake of objectivity, we must learn to look at ordinary things differently. This is necessary in order to understand our purpose in this world and realize our true origin. That's exactly what Silver, a well-known environmentalist, is doing. After all, this man has spent years of his life cleaning the Pacific Ocean of plastic waste. Alice Silver is an ecologist and environmentalist, originally from Wisconsin, USA. He holds a doctorate in limnology, the study of lakes and other inland water ecosystems. For many years, he was the co-director of a private marine research facility in Texas. Until it was destroyed by Hurricane uh, Ike, he now spends most of his time in Europe, North Africa, and the Middle East, with occasional forays to Indonesia. Most of that time is spent on boats. He's passionate about cleaning up the world's oceans, not only from plastics, but from other chemical pollutants as well. He loves wind turbines, modern sculptures, according to him, but he hates solar panels. He's fascinated by our human origins, he has amassed a wealth of evidence which proves we couldn't possibly have evolved on Earth. Silver claims that his book is based on scientific work on the obvious difference between humans and other animals. The Earth roughly meets our needs as species, but perhaps not as much um, as the one who created us originally assumed, says uh, Silver. The researcher believes uh, that some of the chronic diseases affecting humanity, such as back pain, can be a very important sign that people actually appeared in a world with less gravity. Silver also talks about other unique human traits, such, for example, as the fact that babies' heads are relatively large, and that's why it's difficult for women to have children, and in the past this has often been a fatal circumstance for both mother and child. Silver claims that no other species on Earth has this problem. It po he points to 223 additional genes in humans. These are genes that are not found in any other species. The writer believes that a person has very serious flaws indicating, indicating that we are not from this world at all. People are all chronically ill, Silver said. If you can find at least one person who is 100% healthy and does not suffer from any possibly hidden or unidentified painful condition or disorder, um, he would be extremely surprised by this circumstance. Um, Silver believes that many of our problems are the result of one simple fact. Our internal clock is designed for a 24-hour cycle. This has been proven by dream researchers. However, the Earth today is only 24 hours. Uh, this book is very interesting, but in addition to it, there are other studies in various fields of human physiology. They show that there is something abnormal in a person, in a human being. Many hidden connections in DNA, incomprehensible to modern science, may well indicate that we are a species created consciously, or even specially programmed. So where are we from? Today there are many assumptions about our true origin. In his book, Silver suggests that one of the places of the true birth of uh, humanity may be Alpha Centauri. This is the closest star system to the Sun. Um, mankind or humanity is considered the most highly developed species on the planet. However, it is surprisingly uninhabitable here. 
and it is very poorly adapted to the conditions of the earth. People are harmed by sunlight, have a stronger aversion to raw foods, a terribly high level of chronic diseases, and much more. Plus, among many people, the feeling prevails that there are strangers here, or that everything is just not right here on this planet. My point of view, said Silver, suggests that humanity did not evolve from some incomprehensible monkeys. It actually appeared in a completely different place, and it was delivered to Earth between 60,000 uh, to 200,000 years ago. The debate about the origin of man is an amazing topic, and in recent years it has become very popular. Simulations carried out with the help of supercomputers at Livermore National Laboratory in the United States show that amino acids, the building blocks of life, could well have come to Earth with the help of comets or meteorites, and this suggests that the presence of life on other planets and satellites of the solar system is very possible, and that our brains are changing due to some other reasons that we may not as yet understand. So, I hope you like this subject and we will look more into this interesting development to the extent possible. If you su uh, can support my research, please do so. In the, you will find the links in the description to this video. Please subscribe to my channel and tell others. Thank you for your support.